At the time of the 1985 exhibition at the National Gallery of Ireland dedicated to the art of James Arthur O'Connor, which really revolutionised thinking on the Irish landscape tradition of the 18th and 19th century. This view of the eagle's nest at Killarney was described as one of his greatest masterpieces, a judgment which is very difficult to, to gainsay. But even decades earlier, Colonel Grant, who wrote a highly influential, multi-volumed work on the landscape tradition of the 18th and 19th century, had said much the same. In particular, he hailed the sky as worthy of John Constable, for which there was no higher praise for Colonel Grant. It dates from 1731. At that date, O'Connor was living in England, but in a letter of the summer of 1830, he writes that he was going back to Ireland and hoped to take inspiration from the scenery of his native land and take some sketches, which he said would support the further exertion of his profession. And one of the places he visited was Killarney, one of the, the sites of the Irish picturesque for at least half a century before that. And of all the sites in Killarney, with its beautiful lake landscape, the Eagle's Nest had been painted by a generation of artists going back to Jonathan Fisher and also O'Connor's putative teacher, William Sadler. And I think inspired by the Killarney landscape and the studies he took, he came back and really rather revolutionised his art. R rather in contrast to the tranquil landscapes for which he's often best known and, and very much beloved, I think, of all Irish landscape artists, this, this is an exercise in the sublime, the Gothic even. You can see here not just the influence of the Irish landscape, but indeed German romantic painting. And I think it's not too much to say the great contemporary Caspar David Friedrich, that this is man in existential isolation against the overwhelming power and even worse, the indifference of, of nature. The single figure here wearing his red waistcoat, which is such a trademark of O'Connor, demands to be seen as a stand-in for the artist himself. It's almost a self-portrait, as has been suggested.